now we are going to discuss the fourth main entity of theory of automata and computation that is the grammar before studying this grammar topic i recommend you to please go through our previous two videos to get your concepts clear about alphabet string and languages now as we have studied alphabet strings and languages the fourth important entity is grammar and the use of grammar is the grammar is the code behind thing code behind thing means grammar is responsible for generation of any language from any alphabet set we can define grammar as a four tuple tuple means tuple means components there are four components of a grammar they are n t s and t n means the set of all non terminals t means the set of terminals in our previous video i told you what are non terminals and what are terminals how they work i will tell you in this video only the third important component is start symbol and the fourth one is production rules production rules are the rules that generate language from this particular grammar now we will discuss all these four components one by one now out of the four components of our grammar ntsp p was the production rules let's discuss what are production rules production rules are the rules that generate a language from the grammar that means they are a set of rules that generate a language from a given grammar the every production rule is of the form alpha derives beta this arrow represent derives alpha derives beta what are alpha and beta they are strings normal strings any strings on the left hand side are called alpha category and the strings on right hand side are called beta category there is one rule for string to be placed in alpha or beta the rule is at least one symbol in the string alpha must be a non terminal non terminal means the first component of the grammar that was n non terminal is a set of symbols that can be replaced by other symbols from the alphabet set so the rule for alpha is there should be at least one non terminal in the whole string in the category alpha i will tell you some examples of grammars and through those example of grammars i will tell you what are non terminals and terminals so by the time being we will move on to an example of grammar now here are examples of two grammars g1 and g2 we can see the grammar part is divided into four components n t s and this whole p the first one set is a set of non terminals non terminals are s a and b and in the second grammar they are s and a non terminals were the symbols that can be replaced by some other symbols in the alphabet similarly the second component is terminals a and b are terminals in first grammar and a and b are terminals in second grammar note we represent non terminals by capital characters and terminals by small characters s is the start symbol all these non terminals terminals and start symbol will be clear to you s derives ab a derives a and capital b derives b are the production rules for grammar g1 s derives small a capital a b small a capital a derives small a small a capital a b capital a derives null these are the production rules for grammar g2 now see that every production rule is of the form alpha derives beta every production rule is of the form alpha derives beta note that i told you a rule for alpha category strings that the strings in alpha category should have at least one non terminal symbol c s is a non terminal a is a non terminal b is a non terminal here s is a non terminal here from the two capital a is the non terminal and in the last one capital a is the non terminal so at least one symbol should be a non terminal there can be as many symbols in the production rules in the alpha category but only one symbol at least one symbol should be a non terminal now hope you have cleared your concepts about the how a grammar looks like now we will produce languages from this grammars then the concept of non terminals and terminals will be more clear to you now we will study how to generate a language from a grammar 
to study of generation of language from a grammar we will generate a number of strings from the grammar specified and the set of those strings is called a language now the grammar given is g non terminals are sa terminals are small a, small b start symbol is s and the production rules are these specified in curly braces s derives aab aa derives aa aab and a derives null now first and the most important rule of generating a string from a grammar is that we will always start from the start symbol here in our example start symbol is s here is the example of how to derive a string s derives a capital a b is a production rule this one s derives a capital a b we will always start with the start symbol production now using the rule the last one rule production rule a derives null we substitute in the place of this a null so we get s derives a null b null can be discarded and the string form this ab this is how one string is generated from this grammar now i will generate another string and then one more string and will explain you how whole language is generated now we derive another string from the same grammar we start with the start symbol production s derives aab s derives aab we can replace this small a and capital a as a whole by the production small a capital a gives a a capital a b this is the rule which we are using we will replace this by this so on replacing this small a and capital a by this we get small a small a capital a small b and the b is from the original production only so again on employing the production number 3 a derives null for this a in the middle we get small a small a null small b and small b null is an empty string so we can directly write small a small a b b so another string which we got is small a small a b b so we are doing nothing just substituting from the production rules in the main start symbol production and deriving the strings on and on now we will derive another string now we derive the third string again starting from the start symbol production s derives a a b in place of this a a using the second rule we can write small a small a capital a b so we in place of this we write small a small a capital a b and this b is of the original production again replacing this small a capital a in the middle with the same production rule small a small a capital a b we get this small a small a small a capital a b b b these two b's are of this second production now now again there is capital a that is a non terminal between it using the rule capital a derives null we substitute null in place of this capital a we get triple a null triple b as null is empty string we remove it triple a triple b so this is the third string we got triple a triple b so according to this grammar first string we got was ab second string we got was double a double b third string we got is triple a triple b fourth string we will get is four times a four times b fifth string we will get is five times a five times b so like this strings will be going to be produced in the similar manner so we will define the set of language the language that is formed by this grammar is i am erasing this and writing the language here the language that will be formed is l equals ab double a double b triple a triple b four times a four times b and so on it is also a infinite set of language so from this example i have hope so that you have got clarity about how to generate a language from a given grammar you have to do nothing but using the start symbol production just go on making one second and third string and so on just combine those strings in a single set called language
now there was a problem statement which we discussed in our last video about automata and computation the problem statement was whether a string exists in a language or not after studying the generation of language from a given grammar we can answer the solution to this problem we can say that from the given grammar using the production rules we will try to generate that string that we have to test if it is in language or not if we get the string on applying the production rules then we can say that it is in language if we don't get the same string that we are testing by applying the production rules then that string is not in the grammar not in the language i will explain you one more example of generating a language from grammar now now we have to generate language for this grammar here the non terminals are s a b terminals are small a small b start symbol is s and there are three production rules so let's start to make the grammar we will select the start symbol production first s derives capital a capital b now in this production from the second production rule we can substitute in place of capital a small a so we write s derives small a b now note that this is not the string in our final string there should not be any non terminal b is a non terminal so our string will be complete only if we have all the terminals in it so we have to replace b also using the third production rule b derives small b so s derives small a small b this is our final string that we got using all the three production rules of this grammar now note that in our final string there are only terminals there are no non terminals note that every string will be a string only if if it has terminals only non terminals are not allowed in this string non terminals are only allowed in the left hand side of a production now this is the third grammar for which we have to generate a language these are s a and b are non terminals small a small b are terminals s is the start symbol and these are the productions note that in this second production a derives small a capital a slash a this means that this is a combination of two productions capital a gives small a capital a and same capital a gives small a this is a combination of two productions similarly for b also we have two productions capital b gives small b capital b and capital b gives small b so there are a total of five productions this first second third fourth and fifth now to generate the language from this grammar we start with the start symbol production s derives capital a capital b now we can replace this capital a using any of these productions suppose we take on this production capital a derives small a capital a in place of this capital a we substitute s derives small a capital a and this b is copied as it is now our string is not complete as there are two non terminals we have a string to be completed when there are all terminals in this strings so capital a has to be removed capital a can be removed by this production so instead of capital a we use the production capital a derives small a and write this a a and b still there is one non terminal we can remove this non terminal b by using either of these productions if you these production again we will have a capital b like this s derives a a and b is replaced by small b capital b now this b has to be replaced this b can be replaced by using any of the two suppose we take this production we get s derives a a b and in place of this b we get b so this is one string that we have formed using these production rules similarly we can find other strings also first string is small a small a small b small b now using these production rules i will derive one another string again using the start symbol production s derives capital a capital b 
Suppose we terminate the string here itself by replacing capital A with small a using this production and capital B with small b using this production. So we get S derives AB. It is also a string. So we get second string as AB simply. To derive another string, suppose we again consider the start symbol production S derives capital A, capital B and we substitute in place of A with the help of first production A and capital A here and in place of B we write B only here now from this production we substitute small a in place of A A A B and for B from this production we substitute simple B S derives A A B now our string is complete as there is no non-terminal in it all are terminals so third string we have formed using this grammar is a a b now we will form the fourth string now again using the start symbol production s derives capital a capital b suppose in place of this capital a we use this production capital a derives a we get s a and capital b now this capital B can be replaced by this production if we use this production then S gives A B and then again capital B now for this B we can use the second production for capital B that is S derives A B B so now the string is complete as there is no non terminal in it so the fourth string we have got is a B B like this we go on producing other strings also and now we have got the language L is equals to A A B B A B double A B A double B and so on this is the language that we can generate using this grammar so I hope now using the production rules you can generate the grammar and note that the non-terminals and terminal concept is also clear to you non-terminal means any symbol that can be replaced by other symbols as b is a non-terminal we are always replacing b with some or the other production and coming to a terminal now this terminal cannot be further replaced so it is called a terminal where it stops where it terminates and this is called a non-terminal where it can further reproduce by using any other production so i hope generation of language from a grammar is clear to you now we quickly revise our rules for making a production rule in a grammar the production rule is if the form alpha derives beta where alpha and beta both are strings note that alpha string alpha string should contain at least one non-terminal why alpha should contain at least one non-terminal because with the non-terminal only it is possible to make the production move further to replace any symbol we have to replace the symbols and derive a string so only non-terminals can replace a symbol for us and make us reach to the final string therefore we will have a production rule to derive a string second point is terminals cannot be further replaced we know that terminals can never be further replaced therefore they end up by giving us a small output that is a string thus they give us the final output as a string we have to note that the epsilon or the empty string it is also a terminal symbol the whole empty string is represented as epsilon and it is also a terminal we cannot replace epsilon by any other character or any other symbol from the alphabet so i hope the concepts are now clear to you now till now we have discussed the four main entities of theory of automata and computation alphabet string languages and grammar till now if you have any doubts or any queries you can drop an email to our email address that is mentioned in the video description and to watch our full playlist please go through here to go to our previous video click here and to subscribe to our channel click here and then click on the bell button